Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is May 20th. You may or may not know this, but mm -hmm. Steph went to University of Texas at Austin. Yes. I went to Stephen F. Austin out in Nacogdoches. But did I ever tell you this? I actually started my college at San Antonio College. Oh, very cool. With their two years and then transferred to SFA. Nice, and now they're getting some big recognition. They are, I had a great experience over at SAC and it's just up the road here yeah. from KSAT 12 since we're kind of on the edge of the downtown area. But congratulations to San Antonio College. This article on KSAT.com right now. Yeah, they have been named the winner of the 2021 Aspen Prize for Community College Excellence, which is the nation's signature recognition of high achievement and performance among community colleges. The award from the Aspen Institute College Excellence Program is the a first for a Texas community college since the award was issued every two years since 2011. So the award recognizes outstanding institutions selected from a pool of more than a thousand community colleges across the nation. The Aspen Prize honors institutions with outstanding achievement in teaching, learning, certificate and degree completion, transfer and bachelor's attainment, workforce success, equitable outcomes for students of color and students from low income backgrounds. SAC President Robert Vela said this is the highest national honor that a community college can receive. Today's news make me proud, happy and just about every good Good feeling you can imagine. It's a breathtaking achievement for our faculty, staff, and students, and it embodies the very best of everyone who works so hard to make it happen. Congratulations to San Antonio College. Yeah, congrats again. I was telling Mark this sounds familiar because I remember back in 2017 when San Antonio College first gained recognition from the Aspen Institute when it was selected as one of the 150 community colleges eligible for the 2019 Aspen Prize. So and congrats. now they've won the top one. Yeah, they did. Congrats again. Let's look at today's nine at nine. Amid urgent calls for a ceasefire, Israel launched a new wave of airstrikes across the Gaza Strip overnight. At least one Palestinian is dead and several others were wounded. Rescue efforts continue in India. At least 26 people are dead and dozens are still missing after a barge sank during a cyclone earlier this week. The Minnesota Court of Appeals will hear arguments today on whether three former Minneapolis police officers charged in George Floyd's death should face an additional count of aiding and abetting third degree murder. Today, President Biden will sign the COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act. It's aimed at protecting Asian Americans, a minority group that has seen a rise in hate crimes since the start of the pandemic. The family of missing baby James Chidez has confirmed that human remains found in April belong to him. San Antonio police say the findings could lead to more charges against Chidez's mother. That 70s show star Danny Masterson is headed to trial today. He's accused of raping three women in the early 2000s. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has signed the nation's most restrictive abortion law. It bans the procedure at six weeks and allows people to sue abortion providers. It takes effect in September. Lawmakers are introducing two bills that would save the Postal Service more than $45 billion. It would cut the requirement for the post office to pre-fund its pension for retirees. Apple is marking Global Accessibility Awareness Day with a new feature called Sign Time. It allows customers to communicate with Apple Care through sign language. And that's today's Nine at Nine. And well, you may be just now tuning into us, but it's been a beautiful morning here in South Texas, unusually cool. Yeah, and it's still nice out there. I went out there to get my, you know, second serving of coffee from my car, and I was very pleasantly surprised. Ah, uh, it's perfect. What, what a way to start our Thursday. You know, we've had some rainy weather. I think we deserve a little bit of a break. Temperatures did drop into the 50s this morning. Now we're sitting at 68. It's going to warm up pretty quickly. We'll be in the 80s this afternoon. East northeasterly winds at about six miles per hour. Dew point still up there. It's uh, sitting at 62. High temperatures today, close to 83 for for a high with partly cloudy skies. We should see sun most of the day. And temperatures around the area right now starting to warm up, but we're still in the 50s around Comfort. 59 there, 63 Canyon Lake, 68 New Braunfels, 67 in Divine. And there has been a little bit of cloud cover here and there, but. Uh, again, the sun is out in the pollen count molds 6700 and high still a problem, but down from yesterday in the forecast again, takes us up to about 83 easterly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. We do have some more rain chances in the forecast this weekend. We'll talk more about that coming up here in just a few minutes guys. 
All right, thank you, Justin. We are getting a break from the rainy weather today, but as Justin mentioned, it will be back soon. So what should drivers know if they encounter rain or floodwaters while traveling? Traffic Authority Samuel King has the answer. Staying home during extreme weather is always best, but if you must head out, here are some tips. First, we say it often, but slow down. If it's pouring, slow down even more. Don't use cruise control. The chance of losing control of the vehicle increases when you do that in wet weather. And third, of course, turn around, don't drown. But if you manage to find yourself in floodwaters, Josh Zuber with AAA Texas says, avoid the temptation to start your vehicle. Uh, the reason for that is, is that floodwaters, they're corrosive and contain debris that could enhance any damage that a car already has received uh, as a result of taking on water. So in some cases, you know, vehicle can be salvaged by drying it out, but starting a car uh, in flooded waters can send water into the systems uh, that may not have otherwise been affected uh, by standing water. And Zuber says you should wait to have your vehicle towed out of those flood waters and then see if it can be salvaged. Also, proper maintenance ahead of an upcoming storm is important. Things like checking the tires, windshield wipers and lights. Samuel King, KSAT 12 News. Let's check Transcode right now. Roads are dry at I-35 at Alamo. Lots of sunshine out there. We'll keep an eye on the traffic for you during this hour of GMSA at 9. In your morning headlines, we have a wild chase and hero police officers and civilians. A swaying skyscraper and an alligator looking for a drive through David Sears is here. Good morning, David. Alligator got to eat. Apparently. <laughs> at a drive through Okay. But where does he carry his money? That's what I want to know. In the alligator purse? <laughs> <laughs> alligator I don't wow. think so. <laughs> no, no. Get to that in a second first. Let's start with a wild ride. Stolen SUV flying down the South Florida Highway. Troopers in pursuit. Here he comes. You know this is not going to end well. He changes lanes and nails that Honda right there. That vehicle taps another one. The speeding SUV hits the barrier, then flips over and ends up on its roof. Officers surround the vehicles. Their first priority was to get the driver that Honda out of harm's way. I spun around and uh, next thing I know when I stopped, uh, I was next to a police car and they had their guns drawn on, I saw one teenager and uh, they told me to move and get out of the car and get away from the scene. Pretty scary situation after they got her away from the scene. Police started gathering those teenagers who were in the stolen Infinity QX60. One fell out of the back windshield, another was pulled out by a trooper, then another one pulled out, then they got the fourth one out. All in all, there were five teens in that stolen Infinity, all handcuffed, all taken to the Children's Hospital to be checked out there in Florida. None of them had life-threatening injuries. This all happening on I-95 in South Florida, so you can imagine that traffic tie-up. By the way, the driver of the Honda says she was traumatized. I wasn't sure she was even going to tell her kids since she likes to stick with calmer stories. All right, let's take it to Virginia. Police officer literally running to the scene of an overturned vehicle. One person is out of that SUV. A little boy is inside with his mother who's trapped underneath the vehicle. Her head is stuck. She apparently is not breathing. The officer, very calm. Ferks takes care of the little boy. So pay attention to this, though, because we're going to lose the video, but the sound is going to tell the story for us. Come here, buddy. Come here. There's a pillow. Okay. Oh, I'm trying to get out. Can you slide any, ma'am? Are you? Is your head clear? Did you hear that? That was the officer's body cam. Did you hear him? He was lifting that car up high enough for that woman to get her head out and get to safety. Just pick that thing up. Deputy Jay Holt receiving lots of well-deserved praise. And talk about all in the line of duty. This is his second heroic act. He actually saved two people from a burning house last year. All right, now let's head to New York. Two teenagers beating up another teen in the street. They're punching him. They're kicking him. What do they want? A pair of Nikes. First to help out a UPS driver, that is Christopher McCall, walking right up to the scene and he started assisting the victim. The victim told him he couldn't breathe, he was a diabetic, so McCall used one of his packages to actually put it under the teen's head so he could breathe a little easier. Another person called for an ambulance. She's the one that took the picture of the man handing McCall a banana to help with that victim's sugar level. 
I called 911. It was amazing to see New Yorkers come together rather than just walk by. He was very heroic. He jumped in and handled it like it was his own kid. He was a nice looking young man. You know, and that was just like, he could have been dead. There was no stopping. It was, it just looked like they just didn't have no um, remorse or regard for life. And yeah, they would have finished it over some sneakers. Now, police arrested two suspects, a 17-year-old and a 16-year-old. They are looking at charges of robbery and possession of stolen property. The teenage victim is expected to recover. All right, now let's head to China. You're looking at just a few of the 15,000 people. They're all running down the street away from a skyscraper that apparently is swaying. Now, it's hard to tell, so we'll take all those people's word for it. Those 15,000 all worked in the building, and they were getting the heck out of there. No earthquakes, no high winds, just a little panic in the streets. The good news, no injuries, and apparently authorities said there was nothing abnormal found in that building. Hmm. And apparently the alligators in Florida are not above letting somebody else prepare their meal for them. But this guy refused to wait in line. How rude. The six-foot gator was chasing people around a Wendy's parking lot. Wildlife officers eventually called in to wrangle the guy. They were able to haul him off to a safer place for him and the other customers. No word if he actually got his order before he got hauled away, though. Oh, my goodness. I used to work at a Wendy's. Yeah. I would have been terrified. You see that in your parking lot ever? <laughs> I would have hit in the back, I'm sure. I wonder if he ordered chicken. Uh. I hear alligator tastes like chicken, but that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Thank you, David. Yeah, see you in a bit. All right. And the number of Americans seeing unemployment benefits fell last week to 444,000. That's a new low since the start of the pandemic. And with more people looking to get back into the workforce, Texas Workforce Commission is hosting a virtual roundtable aimed at getting Texans job opportunities. They'll go over the best practices for both employers and job seekers. It's happening at 10 a.m. and we will be streaming it in the article you see on your screen. So do head to ksat.com to listen in. New this morning, NIOS has come out with what to expect this June at the Fiesta Favorite event. In an effort to stay safe from the threat of COVID-19, NIOS officials have a few new protocols in place. So first, they will only be selling a limited number of tickets each night to allow for social distancing, and they can only be purchased online. Party, which will run June 22nd through 25th, will introduce touchless and cashless payment with blast past wristbands that you can load money onto with your debit card. That means no more waiting in line for food or drink tickets. Yay! <laughs> Although you might still have to wait a little while for that chicken on a stick. Mm -hmm. And mask coverings are not required if you are fully vaccinated, but those who are not will be asked to mask up. For more on what to expect from NIOSA, you can head to our website at ksat.com. Right now it's 10 after. We're about 68 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. Foster care in Bear County has been a long standing struggle for our community. The defenders looked into the flaws and the future of the system. Coming up on GMSA at 9, we debrief Dylan Collier on his latest investigation. Still ahead also, the uh, time has come to say goodbye to the Spurs season. We'll talk with David and RJ on the disappointing loss last night in Memphis. Later this morning on GMSA at 9 a.m., we're going to introduce you to a teacher here at Southside ISD who goes above and beyond using her passion and her personality to help her students. And welcome back. It's about 914. This month, we've been highlighting some of our most inspirational educators in our Teacher Spotlight series. And this morning, Max Massey introduces us as Stephanie Robles Ng, a social studies teacher at LaSoya Middle School in the Southside Independent School District. Just outline it. Investing so. in the students, I think. Oh, so I love it. To me, so it's done. like they know I care. They know I want to know how they're doing. Good. Students across Southside ISD love Stephanie Robles Nick. Because she makes it fun. Like the teaching is not boring. It's not like work, 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 work. She makes it fun when we work. I don't do busy work, okay? She's also loved by all the faculty. She is an amazing teacher. She does everything uh, that, that you would ask of a teacher. She uh, she engages her students. Students want to go to her class. They're excited when they show up. Are you able to explain it? And like so many teachers across the country, she has had to deal with a lot of obstacles this year. This year, it's just like I was a brand new teacher all over again. How do I get through to them through a screen, through a computer? After more than a decade and a half, she keeps her passion, her personality, and her mission for all of her students. 
I think because I was one of those kids that why and why and how come. She teaches social studies, but students in her class learn so much more. We've been talking about what's going on in the news. And of course, I always tell my students, always look at both sides. Um, you know, you can make your your argument and your opinion. Your opinion's never wrong, but make sure you have evidence as to why you, you believe that. Um, and I always say, leave the emotions at the door. Okay. And she has a goal for all of her students. In four years, they're going to see the real world. You're fine there. And I hope what I've done and how I've explained things will get them ready for that. I love it. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Congrats to Stephanie. Love that these are people are part of our community. Yeah. Justin's back now with an update on the drought monitor on this Thursday morning. Yep, we just got it in. It looks good, although I'll tell you this does not take into account yesterday's rainfall. So keep that in mind when you okay. look at it here. But things are improving. Last week, 45% of the state was in drought. This week, 44%. So just a little jump up. But again, I think that you're going to see some of this go away when we got our next drought monitor next Thursday. Some of this area, that's likely going to go away because of all that heavy rain from yesterday. Here around San Antonio, it's still a moderate drought on the far north side, but even that might go away when we see our, our uh, next drought monitor here in a week. Bottom line, things are looking much, much better than they have. And checking in on Medina Lake, 35% full. It is up a foot since last month. And uh, looking at, well, we were going to look at the aquifer. It's doing good, too. Uh, it has improved quite a bit. And in fact, we are now out of restrictions when it comes to sauce customers. We were in stage two, we just jumped completely out. Uh, so just a heads up there uh, with all the recent rains that uh, that helped. 68 degrees at the airport, 70 Stinson, 68 Kelly, 68 at Randolph. We have east north usually winds at about six miles per hour. 62 Comfort, 64 Canyon Lake, 68 New Braunfels, 70 Castroville. Temperatures are really comfortable. We started off in the 50s this morning. Now we're starting to warm up, but uh, it should still be a pretty nice day. 69 Pleasanton, 70 right now in Catula. And the dew point tracker, dew points are down a little bit this morning, but they're going to stay relatively high, especially as we go into the weekend. Dew points will jump into the upper 60s, and next week looks humid too, so we're not really going to lose the humidity. But uh, the cloud cover has gone away. Clouds moving east. Uh, we've got a few low clouds out near Uvalde and Hondo, maybe a little bit of fog here and there, but that's going to lift very soon and the storm system that has been bringing us all the rain finally moving north showers and storms across parts of Oklahoma, but that's going to shift out. But there is a little piece of energy that moves south, a little piece of low pressure that breaks off here. And what we're looking at is moisture in the atmosphere and you see these orange colors. That's deeper moisture and typically when you get deeper moisture, you can get showers and storms to fire. And as we go into Saturday and Sunday, notice some of that deeper moisture on the uh, backside of this low pressure system start to work in. And so that's why I think rain chances come back up over the weekend. But it's going to be a different situation in the sense that there'll be pop up showers and storms, mainly afternoon stuff. Yeah, we could get some good downpours, but it's not going to be an all day rain event. So if you have plans this weekend, keep them. Uh, just know that uh, you may want to have the umbrella with you and we may see some Good rainfall in localized spots. This is Friday. This is tomorrow, 6 p.m. Showers and storms start to show up, mainly east of I-35. Then as we get into Saturday, we'll see more of those downpours working through the area. So the forecast for today, up around 83, partly cloudy. Easterly winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. Tomorrow, 30% chance of rain. We bring that to a 40% chance. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It'll be those scattered afternoon downpours. And the rain chances finally do taper off, it looks like, middle part of next week, guys. Thank you. At least we get a break today. Yep. Right on time, 920, about 69 degrees. And after the break, Dylan Collier joins us to break down the latest Defenders investigation into the broken foster care system of Bear County. Bear County foster care is in crisis with not enough homes and shelters for these vulnerable children. But as the defenders discovered recently, the situation has gotten even worse. Cheryl Friedberg proudly wears the label of foster parent, which has made the recent revelations about the children's shelter and family tapestry, its wing designated to carry out the privatization of foster care in Bear County, all the more troubling. The concern in the foster parent community is that this is the organization responsible for these children who are in a really tumultuous time in their life. 
forced by the state to remove all of its kids from its emergency shelter late last month, shelter president and CEO Annette Rodriguez provided state officials a 16-point action plan on how she would right the ship. Then 72 hours later, had an apparent change of heart and canceled the community-based care contract, ending the relationship 33 months after it began. It's sad that children who are seeking protection, um, the state is removing them to protect them, are winding up in situations that can cause them more harm. And Dylan Collier joins us more with this report. Dylan, thanks for joining us. Sure. What started all this and why is it having such a big impact? I think we became aware of it when the state put that placement hold in place at the emergency shelter at the children's shelter. So that was in late April, but this had really been taking place. Uh, if you're looking at family tapestry going back at least nine months and then even longer than that when talking about foster care issues, it was really a problem five years ago. Uh, I think the biggest issue recently has been the so-called capacity crisis, which is essentially a lack of beds for foster kids or kids that are taken from their homes and then put into the foster care system. So really the, the issues, but the sort of dispute between the state and family tapestry in late April really exposed some problems and it's kind of been a floodgate of issues that have come out since then. So what has the shelter and family tapestry said about the allegations? They've claimed, uh, Annette Rodriguez has said over and over again that this is part of a statewide capacity crisis. The, the issue with that statement though is that the problems at the shelter and some of their other facilities go way beyond that. There's this ongoing federal lawsuit that's been in place uh, for over a decade now and they have quarterly, sometimes semi-annual reports on how these facilities are doing and they've uncovered a lot of abuse and neglect problems, assaults between kids at these various family tapestry and children's shelter facilities in just the last few months. So um, you can call it a capacity crisis, but in Bear County, it goes well beyond that, and there's a lot of documentation in federal court to back that up. Yeah, there, I saw your story this morning, and I know there was one uh, notable incident between like a five and a nine-year-old. Right. So what happens from here, Dylan? Well, the state is now in the process of taking over the foster care system again. They had moved in 2018 to begin to privatize it, to have family tapestry and other agencies across the state sort of take over the foster care system. Now we've kind of hit the reset button, unfortunately, and we're going back to what it was, say, in 2018 or even earlier than that, where the state not only handles removals from families, but then uh, places those children that are in their care. Uh, as of yesterday on the six o'clock news, uh, they reported that there are close to three dozen children sleeping in CPS offices currently. And obviously that's not a situation that can continue. So those kids are in limbo as of this morning. As of right now, yep. Okay. Well, thank you, Dylan, for joining us. Today. Thank you. Much more ahead on GMSA at nine. Right now it is 927. A heartbreaking loss for our San Antonio Spurs. RJ and David are back to break it all down a little later in the show. Today is National Streaming Day. How much would you say you spend monthly on subscriptions? Still ahead, Eric Hernandez shares some ways to stay, save on those streaming services. And thousands of bills have been filed during the 2021 legislative session. And the writers of the Text Tribune are keeping track of about 20 high-profile measures. We're going to check the status of those bills with Alana Rocha from the Trib after the break. Most bills filed during the 2021 legislative session will not become law. And the Texas House bill could shield companies from liability after commercial vehicle crashes. Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune joins us now to talk about the chances of this bill passing and more. Good morning, Alana. Good morning. Hey, Alana. Good morning. A Texas lawmakers filed thousands of bills during this legislative session. The TRIB is keeping track of about 20 high profile measures. Only one of those bills you're tracking, as I understand it, has actually been signed into law. Right. Uh, those are, again, of the ones we've chosen as far as uh, high profile bills that we've covered throughout, and that being the so-called heartbeat bill that I'm sure you've reported on the governor signing uh, that would ban abortions once a heartbeat is detected, which can be as early as six weeks before many women know they're pregnant. As far as other high profile legislation we've talked about uh, throughout this session, uh, permitless carry, uh, broadband access, voting restrictions, all those bills are in what are so-called conference committees. And that's when the bills have passed the House, the Senate, but slightly different versions uh, have come out of those chambers. And so the heads of those chambers appoint five members each to get around a table and 
hash it out. They send the revised versions back to their chambers for passage before getting to the governor. Um, other measures are different stages, like uh, several measures addressing the winter storm um, and bills addressing uh, transgender youth. And Alana, there's a story behind the status of the anti-trans bills. The Texas Tribune headline reads, Vengeance or Politics? Democrat Harold Dutton explains why he advanced a bill targeting transgender athletes, other GOP priorities. So Alana, why does Harold Dutton, who is a long time House Democrats say he did that. Long time. He's been in there since 1985. In this session, he was appointed chair of the powerful and influential Public Education Committee. Democrats were excited because they thought, okay, as the chair, he can bottleneck some legislation they don't like, given that Democrats have a majority or rather a minority uh, when it comes to uh, the full House chamber. But yeah, Senate Bill 29 in particular that affects uh, transgender youth and what sports they can play, whether or not they uh, associate with a transgender identity or their gender identity, I should say, um, or biological, uh, you know, sex. And uh, that measure filed or failed in his committee. And then when Dutton had a education bill uh, of his own, a priority of his, uh, fail at the hands of a fellow Houston Democrat, um, he brought that uh, Senate Bill 29, the transgender youth bill, back up for a vote on his committee with all Republicans present and passed out. Uh, you know, he says that he uh, runs his committee, that if he has the votes, he brings them up uh, for consideration. But a lot of Democrats and education groups say they are going to remind voters of his actions here when it comes time for a reelection. House Bill 19 could shield companies from liability after commercial vehicle crashes. The bill's sponsors say the bill would prevent excessive lawsuits against companies. However, road safety advocates say otherwise. Why do they have to, uh, what do they have to say rather, and what are the chances this actually passes? Yeah, road safety advocates say it'll make roads less safe because um, this essentially would shield companies, at least in the first stage. So if I'm in an accident with an Uber driver uh, or a 18 wheeler or something like that, and I suffer injuries or whatnot, I couldn't just sue Uber or that company that that 18 wheeler drives for. I would have to uh, go to court and the court would have to show that the, the driver of that company uh, was at fault before getting to a next phase in the legal process that would then uh, tell the jury who that person works for and then assess damages accordingly. People uh, against this say, you know, it, again, shields companies, makes it harder for uh, everyday Texans to get justice when it comes to this. Uh, you know, the bill's author says, look, I'm just trying to prevent uh, frivolous lawsuits when it comes to this stuff. But uh, it's pretty far in the process and it could very well pass. All right. Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune. Thank you for keeping us updated. Have a great day. Thank you. Let's go outside with live cam. Yeah, it's nice out there, Justin. Very comfortable. We're starting to jump into the 70s here, but that's not before we started in the 50s this morning. What a great start. Sun is out. It's going to be a beautiful day. This is the one day where we really don't have rain chances. Look at oh, let's look at the numbers from this morning. 59 here in San Antonio. That was the low. That is well below average, about 10 degrees below average. 54 Kerrville, 55 Rock Springs, 61 in Eagle Pass. And here's the big picture. Rain is moving away. Our last storm system finally getting picked up here and moving out, but it's producing rain from Oklahoma to Kansas to Missouri, and then a lot of weather out there across the northern tier of states. Temperatures you're getting comfortable here in Texas. You run into some really cold stuff as you get up into the Pacific Northwest. It's 29 right now in Cup Bank, Montana. But most of uh, Texas is doing pretty well, 60s and 70s at this hour. And as we look ahead at rain chances, Friday, tomorrow they start to pick up a little bit. Scattered stuff, sat Saturday, Sunday into Monday. And for today, just partly cloudy skies and a high temperature near 83. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Uh, nothing to see here. Just uh, moderate traffic 281 at Grayson on the edge of the downtown area. Oh, boy. <laughs> As RJ writes, no spurs, wow. no. They're breaking everybody's heart right now. The season officially comes to an end after a heartbreaking loss. David and RJ here to break down this disappointing loss at Memphis. And what's ahead mm. in the off season? Good morning, gentlemen. Like no spurs, no. No, no spurs, oh, no. no. Yeah. No. Yeah, right, Steph. Ooh. I'm okay. okay. I I uh, actually stayed up to watch it. You did. And wow. and then you I was too. like, and uh, yeah, you too. And so like at the beginning, we're like, yeah, uh, no. And and then it seemed like they were on a good roll. Mm. And then at, you know, towards the end, I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. Pretty much like all season, right? <laughs> 
I was going to say, no, that was <laughs> a mi- entirely. Yeah, not entirely. a microcosm of the season. Yeah, I mean, really inconsistent, right. up and down, roller coaster ride all the way through. Yeah. I think the big shock last night was, was, other than the fact that they fell down 21 early on, was the fact DeMar DeRozan struggled mm. so bad. And DeJounte Murray, I mean, there's a DeJounte mm-hmm. bucket, but mm-hmm. DeJounte Murray struggled so bad. Combined, mm-hmm. those guys were 9 of 38 shooting. That really stinks. And that's, you, you can't have that. One of those guys was going to have to step up last night. Rudy Gay came off the bench and had, had a decent night when you consider the way they all played. His was decent, but you can't, you got to have more out of your starters than that. Oh, absolutely. And we talked about that right there. We were looking at who was going to be the other guy because we knew that Memphis would probably key on DeMar. Uh, Credit the Spurs, though. They did battle back here in the second quarter, managed to cut this thing down to seven. And right here is when they took the lead in the fourth quarter. And you're thinking to yourself, there's no way. This this would be an unbelievable comeback. And they just could not finish the deal here. Dylan Brooks, big game there for uh, Memphis to uh, kind of uh, lead them to this uh, play in victory here. So let's get right into uh, some of their uh, post-game comments from DeJounte and DeMar. And then we'll talk on the other side about what it's going to happen now. We didn't start off how we wanted to. And uh, obviously, we, we did better. But I feel like we just, even when we came back, I think we took a one-point lead. It still was like, damn, uh, we still felt like we was in the hole. Look, I've never been in this situation before in my career to to be going, you know, completely in as a free agent. I have no clue. I, it hasn't been something I thought about. Thinking about how we could have won, how we could have kept playing. So many emotions, you know, just with these guys. She comes off of- mm. Okay, let, we'll get to him in just a second. First off, watched all the guys come in and do, and do the post game. Lonnie <laughs> Walker was was hurting. He was, I mean, this guy. He was. He was, seemed like he was emotional about mm-hmm. about this thing being over. Yeah. Keldon Johnson was 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 all right. Looking for it. Devin Vassell was like, I'm going to the gym tomorrow. I'm gonna start working out. I'm gonna get stronger. I'm gonna get better. I'm gonna start shooting, putting up shots. I'm gonna get ready. We're not doing this again next year. We're getting, you know, he was like all four working and getting better over over the summer. He was he was kind of fired up about getting in the gym today. So yeah, and was, that was, was interesting post game. Yeah, that was what kind of uh, impressed me coming out of that is that I believe it was Keldon Johnson, Devin, who were basically saying that we will not miss the yeah. playoffs again. So they kind of got a little bit of a taste of it. And again, this was just the playing game, but it was a good opportunity for these young guys to really learn about this pressure. And I mean, like we're saying, the season's over. So that was yeah. it. I mean, we were playing last night. Season's over now. So it was a good learning experience for them. And I, and I think one of the things was kind of like sinking in. Hey, our, our season is over. We were playing every other day. And now it's like, OK, what do we do? We're done. It's <laughs> over. We're, yeah. we're getting on a plane. We're going home. Well, we got nothing to do tomorrow. No practice, no game. No, I mean, so, you know, you're in that habit of, of every other day. And now all of a sudden, you're, you, you, nothing. Yeah, and now we look to the offseason because we we got a lot of big things coming up here. Pop, of course, did not want to comment on what's going to happen this offseason. Of course. Uh, So we don't know about that yet. We know he's going to be the U.S. Olympic coach. But the big decision also is DeMar DeRozan. David, we don't know he's going to be an unrestricted free agent this summer. So uh, what are your thoughts on DeMar? That's what he was talking about. He's never been in this position before where he has a lot of options. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be some teams that are going to be courting him. There's going to be some teams that are going to want him. The Spurs are going to want him to stay, obviously, because, you you know, he, he had some big shots down the street. That was kind of why it was so surprising that he struggled so much uh, last night because of some of the games he had. I mean, he hit several game winners. Yeah. The question is, is this where he wants to be? Does he want to get that big, huge contract? Is he going to be satisfied with some of the money the Spurs are going yeah. to give him? Does he want yeah. to continue to bring along these young guys? He did call this organization A1. Yeah, and he said so it's it's an honor to play yeah. for them. So, but reading between the lines there a little bit, yeah, yeah. he's going to have to actually make this decision. Spurs again will uh, probably offer him a deal for sure, but uh, we'll see what Demar wants. Is, to do. Real quick, it's yeah. Patty Mills uh-huh. and yeah. Rudy Gay awesome. and Demar. And that's the yeah. three. big free agents. Rudy Gay may kind of be the odd man out. Yeah, okay. I don't know what's going to happen with Patty as well. So. Is there somebody that stands out in your mind now looking back on the season now that it's over? Somebody that stands out as really being kind of a star player for the Spurs, especially with the youth movement? I'm going to say we miss Derek White. Yeah. 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 The Spurs went like 2-10, and 2-11 mm-hmm. and 11 without Derek White. And, of course, Keldon had a great second season. But See, he's they my really guy. Miss That's Derek who White. I was going to yeah. pick was yeah. Keldon Johnson's had a, yeah. a really good season for a young guy. It's going, to, it's going to be fun to watch how they develop over the summer, how much they, if, they, if they really want to get it in the gym and really want to work 
and and improve their 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 shot making and their and their defense, mm -hmm. then they're going to be that much better next year. And it'll be fun to see all these young guys develop and then get out because next year is going to be a little more normal. I don't. There's not going to be right. playing every other yeah. game. I mean, they're right. going to have a couple Schedule days in between. Won't be games, as compacted. So, yeah. So all right. So it'll be it'll be a much better season year. as far as that goes. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Onward <laughs> next year. Smile, Steph. It's okay. The race, the race for safe. The race for safe <laughs> gets put on layaway right. for now. Oh, yeah. Nine forty-two, about seventy-two degrees. Oh. You're watching GMSA at nine. Yeah, they need a break. All right. There are plenty of ways to stream your favorite shows, but that doesn't mean you should subscribe to them all after the break. Eric Hernandez has some way to save. Exactly 945. Thanks for joining us again. And yeah, it's nice out there. I'm going to enjoy the little break from the rain. Oh, it's just a beautiful day. Get out and soak up that sunshine. Justin is back with us now. I feel like we deserve it. We, we do. do. Well, at least today, <laughs> right? You're uh, here. Yeah, the, 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 the rain's going to kick back in, though, this weekend. At least some chances. It's not going to be a washout this weekend. I want to show you a picture, though, real quick before we jump into the forecast. Aww. Love this. This is uh, what's National Rescue Day. I don't know if you guys knew that. And uh, this picture uh, was sent in from here in San Antonio. It says, we rescued Abby from a local shelter where she had stopped eating. We nursed her back to health and spoil her with love. They love their Abby girl. That's a great picture. And uh, yeah, National Rescue Day, pretty cool. We've, we've got pictures of your puppy you want to send in a rescue. We'd love to see it. Here's the rainfall over the last 12 months. What we've done here is kind of break it down into seasons. So March, April, May of last year, we had over 10 inches of rain. Then we got into the summer of 2020 and it went dry. The summer was really dry, only about two inches. Uh, the fall, we picked up about uh, nearly five. The uh, winter, about three inches. And now that we're back in spring again, here we are, 9.41 inches. So uh, we're doing we're doing pretty good. It, it just goes to show you though that spring is kind of uh, that that period where we really see our good, healthy rainfall, and that's what we're dealing with right now. We need to build up surplus before we go into the summer and those rain numbers fall off. Here's what to expect. Uh, today, quiet, partly cloudy and nice. Isolated downpours east of I-35 as we get into tomorrow. So rain chances do return on your Friday. And by the weekend, we're talking about hit or miss downpours. Uh, right now, we have about a 40% chance of rain in the forecast for Saturday and Sunday. 68 degrees, partly cloudy, east northeasterly winds at about 6. You can see there is some cloud cover out there. We'll see clouds increase a little bit as we get into the afternoon, but uh, still partly cloudy skies. All in all, pretty nice. 66 Bernie State, 68 Port SA, 71 Pleasanton, 68 Carrizo Springs, 70 right now in Kennedy. And uh, dew points, they're in the low 60s. Uh, this isn't too, too bad, but these numbers will start to creep up a little bit and they'll get a little more humid by the weekend. Big picture here shows most of the rain's well off to our east. So is the cloud cover as that storm system moves away. But a little piece of energy is going to drop south. And this shows the amount of moisture in the atmosphere. When you start to get some of these orange colors, that's high or very high. And typically when you get into that range, you start to see scattered showers and storms. That's what we're going to start to see, I think, Saturday into Sunday. Some of this deeper moisture moves in. But it'll be afternoon pop-up stuff. We're not expecting severe weather. There could be some pockets of heavy rain. But uh, again, it'll be hit or miss. If you have weekend plans, just know that there will be some rain out there, but it's not going to be a complete washout. Tomorrow shows uh, isolated showers and storms, and then by the weekend, again, more activity moving through. Temperatures around 83 degrees today. East Julie winds 5 to 15 miles per hour, and the extended forecast will go 30% tomorrow, 40% Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then rain chances do start to taper off next week. Guys? All right, Justin, we will prepare for more rain. And today is National Streaming Day. Whether you were aware or not, chances are you are planning on firing up your device sometime today. Recent survey from TopCashBack.com showed that 52% of the more than 1,800 people polled say they subscribe to a new streaming service during the pandemic. But as Erica Hernandez explains, there are ways to save on those subscriptions. Netflix, Hulu, Apple, Amazon, Roku, Paramount, Disney, there is no shortage of streaming sites to choose from. In fact, many of us end up getting sucked into paying for multiple. According to Amper Analysis reports, the average household has four subscriptions totaling about $47 a month. That's up from April last year when most homes only had three. 
So what if you'd like to cut that cost? Experts say it's a good idea to review your subscriptions every few months to make sure you aren't paying for something you don't need. Pro tip, set a reminder to cancel any trial runs you don't plan to keep. Don't forget to look for discounts. A lot of times, cell phone providers or even your employer offer special promotions. There are also cashback opportunities on sites like topcashback.com. You can earn some of your money back on services like Amazon Prime and Disney+. Plus. And don't impulse subscribe. Do your research. For example, if you're always shopping online and need things quickly, but also like to watch movies and shows, then Amazon Prime might be the fit for you. Last but not least, check out some free services like the KSAT TV streaming app. For GMSA at 9, Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. It does add up. Uh, Steph has every streaming service known to man. Uh <laughs> No, I have a lot more, though, than yeah. I did last year. Yeah. So, yeah. so what's your favorite right now? Right now? Uh, I guess... I guess Hulu because it's live. Hulu? Yeah. Yeah, my favorite new one of the last year is Disney. Disney Di Plus. Oh, well, yeah. Pfft, yeah, I forgot about that. Yes, of course, Disney. <laughs> oh, yeah. <pfft. laughs> 9.51 on your Thursday morning. We'll be right back. Good morning. Hey there. Coming up on live, Uzo Aduba from the new series, Solos. Plus, spring into summer bargains with Monica Mengen. We'll see you soon here on live. The pandemic's changed everything, including the college admissions process. Coming up today at noon, why your high schooler might not need to prep for their SAT or ACT. And tomorrow on GMSA, a UTSA graduate hoping to bring a product to the market that could help make roads safer. You don't want to miss how this device can detect fatigue in drivers. And we're sitting at 71. We'll be up around 83 degrees today. Partly cloudy skies. Rain chances do kick back in tomorrow. Only a 30% chance. And then some scattered afternoon downpour Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. We've had to say quite a few goodbyes here on GMS lately, and we've got another one today. That's right. We're saying goodbye to Gretchen. We enjoyed working with you so much. This is a picture of our beautiful Gretchen, and so sweet, and we're going to miss you. Uh, thank you for all you've done for us, and especially during the winter storms. Oh, my goodness. That yeah, was a very week. Busy. Yeah, Gretchen and her uh, fiancé are headed up to Detroit. Michigan, so winters are about to be a little different, although you got a little taste in <laughs> February here. It's just a little bit of a longer process. But Gretchen started as a producer trainee, worked her way up to producer, has done some great things here on GMSA. And again, I said it the other day when we were talking about Oriana leaving this particular show. We love it when good people go on to do great things for themselves and their careers. And Gretchen personifies that for sure. Yeah, we are very happy for you, Gretchen. But of course, we're sad, too, because we're going to miss you. We enjoyed working with you most definitely. Well said. Yep. Yeah. And uh, hopefully, you know, I stayed on my time cues most of the time. She was uh, timing us out during weather. So yes. can't be too mad at me, but we wish her the best <laughs> as, as she goes off to uh, Michigan. One of the <laughs> sweetest people in the news business, but we're hoping she gets a gig up there. And uh, good luck, Gretchen. Yep. Yeah, good luck. We're going to miss you. I'm going to go talk to you right now. I think she's in the back. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks Have for watching. Day. Our crews are back for the news at noon. We'll see you in uh, about two hours.